Hello everybody, Nelson Virgil here with ExcelMail.com. ExcelMail.com is a four-year-old forum um, online site. It's got more than 14,000 members. Some of them are doctors, pharmacists, dietitians, exercise trainers, nurses, and many, many educated men from all over the world. So join us. Register on ExcelMail.com and get a free download of my book, Testosterone, A Man's Guide completely free of charge, and also some fact sheets on HCG and side effect management. So we get a lot of freebies by registering on my site. You'll get newsletters once a month, um, basically updates on what's new on the field of not only testosterone replacement, but men's health in general, okay? So today we're going to talk about testosterone replacement therapy and the side effects. How, are we gonna, how can we manage side effects? Not everybody has side effects on testosterone replacement therapy. By the way, when I talk about testosterone replacement therapy, it's a therapy provided to men that have low testosterone. Usually low testosterone in the United States uh, under an insurance reimbursement system is uh, levels or levels of 350 nanograms per deciliter or below. Some clinics, uh, depending on the doctor, may treat men that have testosterone under 500 nanograms per deciliter if they have symptoms of low testosterone. Symptoms are like low sex drive, low libido, low, um, a lot of uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, low mood, fatigue, um, low, you know, bad concentration and focus, and uh, lack of coping with uh, stress in daily life. So, so men actually have all the symptoms and may have testosterone level that are above 350 and some doctors may actually treat them. But under insurance uh, reimbursement, 350 or below is the way to get uh, insurance companies to pay for it. So today I'm going to talk about side effects. And as I said, many men don't use, don't have side effects, but some do. The main side effects of testosterone replacement therapy are high hematocrit. I'll explain what that means, hematocrit. I'm sorry about my horrible spelling and handwriting. Um, could be um, high blood pressure, and that's only in a few men that may have metabolic syndrome or issues with metabolic uh, pressure and edema, water retention. That's very few. As I said, mostly men with oh, either cardiovascular risk factors or metabolic syndrome. Um, testicular um, atrophy or shrinkage. Not all the way, you lose some testicular size, but it can be reversed uh, by HCG. I'll talk about how to prevent this or even fix it if you have it. Um, uh, low or or no fertility, meaning your sperm production and quality goes down. Okay. Um, those are about the most important ones. There are no, and I'm going to say with an X, no liver issues. No matter what people tell you. The social replacement therapy by injections, creams, pellets, bulkal, etc., does not have liver toxicity. No prostate cancer in, uh, inducement. Long term studies have shown that the social replacement does not cause prostate cancer. It may in increase prostate cancer. Um, 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 spread if you already have prostate cancer to start with, but it does not cause prostate cancer. Heart attacks or heart disease. Actually, no testosterone has been shown to increase the risk of heart, heart disease. So this, this three factors have been proven by long-term uh, studies, and you're going to hear in the media, especially lawsuit lawyers that are wanting to through the pharmaceutical companies um, 
you're going to hear scary stories about this tree that have been dismissed by pretty good data that we have so far. Not saying it's all safe, as you can tell, there's side effects here. Hematocrit, what is hematocrit? Hematocrit is the proportion, I'm going to use the red, the red um, pen here, the proportion of red blood cells, this is a test tube, okay? And let's say these are red blood cells, and this is the total volume of the blood, okay? So this is, when you divide this proportion of the red blood cell volume by the total volume of the serum sample, that's what we call hematocrit. Hematocrit, or the amount or volume of red blood cells, increases with testosterone. Testosterone is a hemopoietic drug. It enhances the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow, in the kidneys, etc., which is good for people that have low uh, red blood cells or anemia. Uh, definitely works for that purpose, but it could be bad for people that have increases of red mitocrit until the blood gets so viscous, so thick, that you may actually have a higher incidence of heart disease. So this heart attack issue, if you're monitoring and managing testosterone replacement well, does not happen, unless your doctor is not following up your hematocrit. And hematocrit is part of a, a panel that we call uh, CBC, the chemistry and blo blood count. Uh, on this counter labs, by the way, it's my site, you can buy it for like $29. So it's, it's a very cheap test that includes uh, some blood counts and red blood cells in hematocrit. You can actually monitor your hematocrit, especially in the first six months uh, when you start testosterone replacement. And try to avoid being uh, anywhere close or above 53. That's the magic number. Uh, 53, 54, we're high end, starting to get thick. Some guys even go up to 60, 70, and the doctors don't do anything about it. They just don't even monitor that. They're walking, basically taking bomb. I'm very concerned about that. It's a very simple test that you can follow. And the way to bring hematocrit down is to donate blood. You hate you, um, blood. And you help the world by donating, and you help yourself by decreasing hematocrit, and you're viscosating your blood. Some guys are not allowed to donate because they've been exposed to different illnesses. There's a long list of exclusion criteria and the Red, blood, and, uh, and the red Cross. So those that are rejected, <laughs> and I hate to use that word, from donating can ask their doctors for an order or a prescription to go into a blood center to get a, what we call phlebotomy, a therapeutic phlebotomy. It's the same thing as blood donation. It's just that they don't keep your blood, they dis discard it. Because obviously you are not meeting the criteria of a clean donor. Don't get too close to 53, because blood centers tend to reject you when you get this to this number. So I tell you guys, it's better to prevent, you know, if you're already anywhere in the, 50, in the 49 to uh, 52 range, it's time to go and donate blood. Not everybody needs this. Um, some guys don't have, uh, they do have an increase in the beginning, but then they're stabilized. Some studies show that after 18 months on TRT and testosterone replacement, hematocrit uh, tends to stabilize. I've only donated blood once in my life. Uh, I've been taking testosterone for 24 years. So obviously it's not a huge problem for some of us, but uh, for some strange reasons, some men are more genetically predisposed to having increases in hematocrit and they have to donate every three to four months. Donating more frequently than that can get you in trouble, so be careful. The Red Cross has actually done a study that anybody that donates more frequently than every three months tends, tends to have low iron and ferritin. You'll feel very fatigued um, and you'll basically your testosterone replacement is not going to work because you're so fatigued due to the low iron. So try to keep an eye on the fact that if you do need to donate, don't go there so frequently that uh, you get in trouble with that. And if you do have that problem, you you know your, your doctor is going to talk to you about an iron supplement so that you can bring that up. Anyways, so high blood pressure and hematoc and edema, water retention. Very few patients, uh, very few uh, men may have a problem. Some just basically are put on 
diuretics or you are told to lose some weight, it is metabolic uh, related, do more cardio, watch your diet, your sugar intake, alcohol intake, that tends to increase water retention. Um, testicular atrophy, like I said before, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I do have another video on HCG, um, can be related to the fact that testosterone shuts down luthadizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Those two hormones keep the testicolytic cells happy and plump, and without them, the testicle, um, testicular uh, lady cells go dormant. That can be reversed with the use of HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. I have another video on it. Watch it so that I don't have to go into details today. The same thing for testosterone can decrease sperm uh, quality and um, amount because of this, because of the shutdown of LH and FSH. The use of, once again, HCG with TRT may help some guys um, able to actually uh, get their wives or their girlfriends pregnant if they want to have a kid. So these are the main, uh, the main side effects. Um, some guys worry a lot, <laughs> and I'll talk about it in another video, uh, about estradiol. So um, watch that video on estradiol management that I'll be posting um, on ExcelMail.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.